Welcome. This video is about types in model theory. Types can be used to talk about elements of a structure that are not really there, informally speaking. For example, if A is a structure whose domain is the set of natural numbers and which carries the constant 1, the binary addition and the order, then we may want to talk about an element that is larger than every natural number. Clearly, there is no element in the structure that has this property. But still, to better analyze a given structure, we might want to talk about such fictional elements as well. And types offer a very natural and convenient way to do so. Formally, we have a fixed signature tau, and we also fix the tau theory, T. We now define n types of T. If n is a natural number, then an n-type of t is a set of tau formulas, p, with three variables x1 up to xn, such that t union p is satisfiable. We have already defined what it means for a set of sentences to be satisfiable. Namely, there must exist a model of this theory. But here we have some free variables. The definition of satisfiability can be generalized to formulas in a straightforward way. We require that there exists a structure B and an element in B for each free variable, so that when we replace the free variables by these elements, the respective sentences hold in B. A little p is used to denote types, probably because precisely our informal idea that, that, that we use types to talk about points, p for points, points in the structure that might or might not be there. Let's have a look at an example. How do we use types to talk about these infinitely large fictional elements that I was talking about? First of all, we set t to be the theory of our structure. Then p is the following set of formulas with a single free variable x1. For each natural number k, we introduce the formula that states x1 is larger than k, where k is written out as 1 plus 1 plus and so on, k times. So for each k, this is a satisfiable formula over our fixed signature. However, note that there is no element in our structure that simultaneously satisfies all the formulas in p. In such cases, we say that P is not realized in A, or that P is omitted in A. We will see later that the union of T and P is satisfiable. So P is indeed a one type of T. There are also types that are realized in A. Consider, for example, the set Q that just contains the formula x1 equals 1. Clearly, T union Q is satisfiable, namely by substituting X1 by 1. So here we say that the one type Q is realized in A. Let's first have a look at another example. We consider the structure A whose domain are the rational numbers. Again with the constant 1, addition, but this time also with multiplication and the order. Let t be the first order theory of this structure. Again, t has a type for infinitely large elements, but here we also have a one type which expresses that an element is infinitely small, but positive. For that, we consider the following infinite set of formulas with one free variable x1. For each k, we write down that x is smaller than 1 over k which we can, of course, express by a first-order formula using multiplication, addition, and the constant 1. Then we also have the formula that states that x1 is strictly larger than 0. Clearly, this is a type that is not realized in A, since every rational number that is positive is larger than 1 over k for some large enough k. However, p is a type, that is, I claim that the union of P and T is satisfiable. This is not hard to see and follows from the following fundamental lemma about types in first order theories of structures. 
let A be a tau structure. Let sigma be a set of tau formulas with the free variables x1 up to xn. We would like to know, is sigma an n-type of the theory of A? And this can be characterized in several equivalent ways. The first observation is that it suffices to show that every finite subset of sigma is realized in A. This is of course a very convenient condition. First of all, because it is much nicer to work with finitely many rather than infinitely many formulas. But also because we can work with the original structure A. We don't have to look at other models to determine whether sigma a union T is satisfiable. The next equivalent condition states that A has an elementary extension that realizes sigma. So this sounds as if in the proof from 2 to 3 we, we have to use the compactness theorem, which is true. Since we deduce something from finite subsets of a set of formulas for the entire set of formulas. We will see how this works precisely in the proof. So we have three different statements. The implication from the third statement to the first is trivial. If A has an elementary extension that realizes A, then by definition of elementary extensions, this extension satisfies T. So T union sigma is satisfiable. Therefore, sigma is a type. We'll now prove that 1 implies 2, and then that 2 implies 3. To prove that 1 implies 2, suppose that sigma is an n-type of the theory T of A. Then by definition of types, T has a model B with an n-tuple of elements that satisfies sigma. Now, if Psi is a finite subset of sigma, then we can form a conjunction of all the elements of Psi and obtain a formula that holds in B at the given tuple. This in turn implies that A satisfies the conjunction as well, because A and B satisfy the same complete theory T. This implies that there exists an n-tuple of elements of A that satisfies Psi, that is, Psi is realized in A, and concludes the proof that 1 implies 2. To prove that 2 implies 3, Suppose that every finite subset of sigma is realized in A. To apply the compactness theorem of first order logic, we consider the first order theory obtained from sigma by replacing the free variables by new constant symbols, C. And we take the union of the resulting sentences with the theory of the expansion of A by constant symbols for all elements of A. By assumption, Every finite subset of this first order theory is satisfiable. So by compactness, there exists a model B that satisfies the entire theory. If you then look at the tau reduct of B, that is, we drop all the new constant symbols, then the resulting structure is an elementary extension of A that realizes sigma. The constants for the elements of A made sure that we have an elementary extension, and the constants for the free variables made sure that we find witnesses for the free variables that show that sigma is realized. Particularly important for us will be complete types. An n-type is called complete if it is maximal in the following sense. For every tau formula phi with free variables x1 up to xn, if we add phi to t union p, the resulting set of formulas is no longer satisfiable. Equivalently, for every tau formula phi with free variables x1 up to xn, either phi is in p or the negation of phi is in p. Complete types arise naturally as follows. If you have an n-tuple of elements of our structure A, then clearly the set of all first order formulas phi that are satisfied by, by this tuple A in our structure is a complete type. This type is also called the type of the tuple A. Our first theorem in this video 
will be about structures that realize many types. A structure is called saturated if it realizes many types, even after we have added some constants to the structure. To make this precise, let A be a tau structure and let B be a subset of the domain of A. Recall that A sub B denotes the expansion of A by constants for all elements of B. S subscript N superscript A of B denotes the set of all complete N types of the expansion of A by constants for all elements of B. These will be called complete N types of A over B. If kappa is an infinite cardinal, then A is called kappa saturated if all subsets B of the domain of A of cardinality strictly less than kappa, A realizes all one types of A over B. A is called saturated if it is saturated in its own cardinality. One might ask, why only one types? What about n types? It is an easy exercise to show that changing 1 to n does not make a difference here. So we prefer 1 types because it is simpler to think about points rather than tuples. An example of a structure that is saturated is the ordered rationals. Here the domain is countable, so it suffices to show that this structure realizes all 1 types even after we have added finitely many constants. If q1 up to qn are elements of q, we consider the expansion of q by constants for these elements. What are the one types of the resulting structure? I claim that there are precisely 2n plus 1 complete one types. First of all, we have one one type for each of the constants. Then we have one one type for a point that is smaller than all the qi. Since q has points that are smaller than all the qi, this one type is clearly realized. Moreover, any two elements a and b that are smaller than the, all the qi realize the same complete one type. This can be seen as follows. By the homogeneity of q, there is an automorphism of q that fixes all the qi and maps a to b. Moreover, automorphisms preserve all first order formulas. So A and B satisfy the same complete one type. Similarly, there is one one type for a point that is larger than all the QI. Finally, there are n minus one remaining one types. To see this, suppose that the QI are ordered in ascending order. Otherwise, we rename the elements. And then there is one one type for a point that is larger than qi but smaller than qi plus 1 for all i from 1 up to n minus 1. So this gives another n minus 1 one types. Saturated structures have many nice properties. Let's start with the property that any two saturated structures of the same cardinality and the same first order theory are isomorphic. Of course, the way to show this is a back and forth argument, as we have seen it earlier in this course. We fix an enumeration A alpha of the elements of A and an enumeration B alpha of the elements of B. Now we construct a sequence C alpha of elements of A and a sequence d alpha of elements of b such that the theory of the expansion of a by constants of the for the a alpha and the d alpha is the same as the first order theory of the expansion of a by constants for the c alpha and the b alpha i claim that the map that sends a alpha to c alpha is an isomorphism. It's clearly an embedding and the map that sends B alpha to D alpha must be its inverse. We construct these sequences by transfinite induction. The elements of A and of B can be indexed by some cardinal kappa. We have to define C alpha and D alpha for alpha smaller than kappa. If alpha is zero, then the statement holds 
by the assumption that A and B have the same first order theory. If alpha is a limit ordinal, then actually there is nothing to be shown. And if alpha is a successor cardinal, then the existence of an element C alpha and D alpha follows easily from the assumption that A and B are saturated. Our next goal will be the construction of saturated elementary extensions. The first step is a lemma that states that every structure A has an elementary extension that realizes all one types over A. By our previous lemma, we already know that every single one type can be realized in some elementary extension of A, but now we have to realize all of them in a single elementary extension. And this is actually quite straightforward. We fix an enumeration P alpha of all the one types of A over A. Then we construct an elementary chain, A0, A1, and so on, such that the type P alpha is realized in A alpha plus one. To construct the elementary chain, we again use transfinite induction. If beta is a limit ordinal, then we define A beta to be the limit of the A alpha for all smaller alpha. If beta is a successor ordinal, alpha plus one, we define A beta using our previous lemma. We need to find an elementary extension of A alpha that realizes the type P alpha. By the previous lemma, it suffices to show that all the finite subsets of P alpha are realized in A alpha. But this is clear since they are already realized in A0. So the previous lemma implies that A alpha has an elementary extension A alpha plus one, realizing P alpha. The union over the entire chain then realizes all one types of A over A and is an elementary extension of A by Tarski's elementary chain lemma. Note that the elementary extension that we have constructed need not be saturated. It realizes all one types of A over A, but the limit of the chain has many new elements. So many new one types over parameters from the new elements. But we can take the very same lemma to construct saturated structures by taking another limit. So we will prove the following theorem. Let A be any structure and let kappa be any infinite cardinal. Then A has a kappa saturated elementary extension. To prove this, we construct an elementary chain A alpha of length kappa plus as follows. So the chain is strictly longer than kappa. We construct the chain with transfinite induction, starting with A. In the successor step, we define A alpha plus one to be an elementary extension of A alpha that realizes all one types over A alpha. Here we simply use the previous lemma. If beta is a limit ordinal, we define A beta to be the union of all the previously defined A alpha for alpha smaller than beta. And this gives an elementary extension of the A alpha by Tarski's elementary chain lemma. Finally, B is the union of the A alpha over all alpha that are strictly smaller than kappa plus. This is in particular an elementary extension of A and kappa saturated. In fact, B is even kappa plus saturated. To prove this, we have to show that for every set S, of cardinality less than kappa plus, 
B realizes all one types in B over S. B is defined to be a limit. I'm illustrating this with an onion, where the layers of the onion are the A alpha. Now it can be shown that S must lie in A alpha for some alpha, which is at most kappa. This is a basic set theoretic fact, which requires proof and is explained in the appendix of the course notes. It follows that A alpha plus one realizes all one types over A alpha. And therefore B also realizes all one types over S. This concludes the proof that A has an elementary kappa saturated extension. It is now interesting to ask how small we can choose this extension. This is also relevant for the question whether we find saturated extensions. Recall that a structure is called saturated if it is saturated in its own cardinality. So we have to revisit our proof to check how large the structure B is that we have constructed. The first observation is that if we have a union of a chain of length kappa plus of structures of cardinality 2 to the kappa, then the union of the limit has cardinality 2 to the kappa. The next observation is that for every structure A and every n type P over A, there exists an elementary extension of A of the same cardinality as A that realizes P. This is a basic consequence of the Löwenheim Skolem theorem. The final observation is that if we have a tau structure A whose signature tau is bounded by the cardinality of A. Then there is an elementary extension B of A realizing all one types over A, which has cardinality two to the kappa. So this gives us a bound for the successor step in our construction. Putting all this together, we obtain the following corollary. Suppose that we have an infinite cardinal that is larger than the size of the signature tau and a tau structure A of cardinality at most 2 to the kappa. Then A has a kappa plus saturated elementary extension of size 2 to the kappa. Let's instantiate this corollary for kappa equals aleph 0. So the signature is in this case countable. Moreover, kappa plus is then the same as aleph 1, by definition of aleph 1. The continuum hypothesis states that aleph 1 equals 2 to the aleph 0. So any aleph 1 saturated elementary extension is in this case saturated, saturated in its own cardinality. Let's phrase this as another corollary. We assume the continuum hypothesis. Let T be a satisfiable first order theory over a countable signature. Then T has a saturated model. To see this, note that the theorem of Löwenheim and Skolem implies that there exists a countable model of T. Assuming the continuum hypothesis, the above tells us that T even has a saturated model. This is one of the places where set theoretic aspects are relevant for model theory. An interesting model theoretic question is which theories have a countable saturated model. Generalizing the argument that we have seen for Q, the strict order of the rational numbers, one can show that every homogeneous structure with a countable signature is saturated. This provides many examples. This video was about structures realizing many types. The topic of the next video will be the opposite. We will construct models that omit certain types.